It's working. How's my lighting? Let's see. That's, is that better? It's probably better. Less blasting in the face. Uh, hi, guys. Welcome back. Uh, today is Art Talk, Episode 2. Uh, I'm not replacing the, the vlog with Art Talk. Uh, this is a, a Facebook Live. I am Fireball, your host, and this is Art Talk, where we talk about what it's like to be a professional artist. Good morning, Kane. How are you? Uh, you're the first watching. Robert Smith has joined us. Who else we got? Uh, looking pretty good. Um, Dennis. Good morning, Dennis. Uh, hanging out. Uh, yeah, today um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, creative flow, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, Dean, good morning. Ivan, good morning. Boy, a lot of you guys are hanging on, on Facebook today. It's awesome. Who else we got? Kelly Pearson Baker. Very nice. Uh, welcome, Charles. Uh, good morning, guys. I hope that you have your coffee because uh, this is kind of, look, I even have my name. Uh, that comes from Brad up in, in Canada. It's backwards. It says Tim's. It's a Canadian mug. Eh? Uh, who else do we have? Um, Janet? Okay. Charles? Uh, Luis? Yes. Awesome, guys. Thanks for joining me today. I'm very excited about this, uh, about Art Talk, because, you know, I'm trying to figure out a way to to get you guys motivated and excited about uh, your life as a creative person. And I'm not talking about necessarily an artist, a photographer, a sculptor, but creativity. We are creative beings. We're human beings and our job is to be creative in a lot of ways. You can be creative as a teacher. You can be creative as uh, a business builder. Um, doing a business plan, that's a creative process. So uh, our point, our, my point is that as human beings, we are meant to create. That's what we do. And um, if you don't do that, then you are uh, stifled and you're not going to be around for, for that long. Let me adjust my chair. I hope everybody is having a, a good day today. Uh, before we get started, I want to give you an update. Uh, it is raining outside my window here at my office. And uh, Wes, good morning, Wes. Luis, uh, good morning. Um, Muscles and Mojo was, that was going to happen uh, this Sunday at the Murphy Museum has been canceled due to rain because it's rained both days. In fact, it's rained for like the next five days, five or six days. Uh, we're going to postpone that until April. It happens every first Sunday of the month, Muscles and Mojo at the Murphy Museum in Oxnard. Uh, if you wanted to come out, um, don't because we're not going to be there. It's not going to, you know, no one's going to be there. It's going to be uh, uh, full rain. So uh, the next show after that is Wheels and Waves in Malibu. That's going to be March 17th, St. Patty's Day. Oy! That's, that's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, bring, uh, wear something green or I will pinch you. I'm not kidding. I'm not joking. I will pinch you. Um, uh, I enjoy that part. That's just like fun. Uh, anyway, do I have a, I don't know even know if I have a green shirt. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So let's talk a little bit today. Um, uh, I was trying to, to figure out a, uh, a couple of good things to talk to you guys about because as a creative person, you are challenged in a variety of ways. And the, the, the biggest challenge in becoming a creative person is deciding in which way you want to be creative. And that, that, question can easily be answered and solved by asking yourself, what do you love? Now, on the vlog, you know, we do everything we can to um, to convey the message that, um, uh, hold on, to convey the message that uh, you got to do what you love and love what you do. And there's a reason for that. It's not just a saying. Uh, you got to do what you love because what you put out into the world is what comes back to you. You guys know this. And, uh, uh, love what you do is in, in conversely is, uh, you have to put as much passion into the thing that it is that you're doing. And if you do that, then success is imminent. It's a, it's a guarantee. And, uh, there are lots of other things that you have to do. Uh, Sean, what's up, Sean? Uh, good to see you. Good morning. So as a creative person, uh, as even if you're in sales or if you happen to have a, a, a beef jerky business or something else, um, talking to certain people, and you have to be creative. You have to think of ways to market it. You have to think of ways to sell it. You have to think of unique ways that uh, um, uh, that maybe other people are not, not doing. So there's a term that I want to mention to you guys, and I want you to think about this. And this term is baseline creative. And uh, most people that are baseline creatives are people that are uh, uh, struggling or working to be creative but they're not pushing themselves that, that hard. Good morning, Sean. Good to see you, man. Um, they, they're not pushing themselves that hard and they, they're not necessarily that confident in what it is that they're doing and because they're, they're trying to force it in a way. 
And if you do something that you love, uh, it's natural, natural confidence comes, natural fun, natural joy, and longevity exists. So um, baseline, uh, here's a good example. Um, when we first started the coloring books, here's the Mustang coloring book, it says Gnatsum, that's what it says. I just did a Gnatsum coloring book. I don't know what the hell that means. It's Mustang, it's backwards. Um, uh, when we first did the coloring books, I had to go out and see what kind of coloring books were out there. I had to, to, to uh, uh, take a look and see what was permeating the market. And it was important to find the absolute best book that I could find. And that best book was my going to be my baseline. I, I decided that that was the, the place I was going to start from, is that what's the best kind of book that's out there, and how can I create a book that is better than the absolute best? And that was my baseline. So as a baseline creative, if you have a company, uh, good morning, Chip, uh, sorry, Kip, Kip, I put, I put your first and last name together. Sorry about that. Uh, Kip, good morning. I think, did I miss someone? No. Okay. Um, if, if you're, if you want to create a business or you want to do something creative, even if you want to sculpt, let's not even talk about making a, a, into a business, but if you want to do what you love and you want to be a sculptor, um, you get inspired by those that do it really well, right? You get inspired by what you see and, and, and things like that. But you have to push yourself. Good morning, John. Um, you have to push yourself in, in ways that are uh, not necessarily comfortable. Uh, we had to figure out for the coloring books, how do we create not only a great book that has great art, you know, like has good art on it, things like that, but also the quality. You have to think about the quality, what people expect. You have to think about how many pages, you know, there was coloring books out there that were a hundred freaking pages. That's a lot. Um, Kip says, there's a local store up here in Canada that always gives back to the local community. The lineups are crazy. Uh, of course, um, very good point. You know, Giving is a is an integral aspect of not just about giving to people, uh, but giving to to the energy that you have in a given subject, giving all of yourself, giving uh, everything uh, that you are. And people that work as baseline creatives, they're it's not a negatory a, a negative term or a derogatory term. It's it's a term that we use that says. Here's someone who's starting out. They don't, don't really know which direction that they're going, but it's kind of like, um, I want to fly to Hawaii, but I don't know which island, but I'm just going to get in a plane and keep going. Uh, Mark says, good morning from Gig Harbor. Good morning, Mark. Good to see you. Uh, so uh, you want to find uh, those creative people that are working in an area that you want to work in. And you want to find the best. Now, I have a very good friend uh, that I reached out to when I was young, um, when, before I went to Art Center College of Design, uh, a guy, I, I was working at a bookstore, uh, um, Brentano's or something like that. They don't even exist anymore. And I found a book by a gentleman named Sid Mead. And Sid was a concept illustrator in film and a designer. And I, every time I opened up one of his books, I just freaking drooled all over it. Not literally, but you, you get my sense. Good morning, Johnny. Um, so I, 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 I looked at this book and I said, this guy is a creative genius. This guy is a conceptual, uh, he must have sold his soul. And I said, I'm going to find this guy. And lucky for me, I was living in Ojai, California. Uh, I found out that Sid was down in Hollywood. So I, I called him up. I found him in the phone book. I called him up and I said, hey, can I come down and uh, sit by your side and talk to you and ask you some questions? Good morning, Mike. Yep, Mike Chaffers. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, so... I did that. I drove down on a Friday and I talked to Sid and he was very cordial, very open to allow me to sit next to him. This is around the time that the movie Blade Runner was being done. So every Friday, I drove from Ojai to LA, hour and a half drive, an hour and 15 minutes, down to LA. Every Friday, I did that. Friday morning for a year, I drove all the way down and sat by his side and had him teach me uh, uh, things about what it was like to be a professional illustrator and, and creative person. And I probably learned more from him in that year than I did, you know, at all my tenure at Art Center and, and a lot of different things. Uh, but his, his approach was unique and um, he did some amazing things. Uh, Mark says, I was fortunate to have Sid Mead on my Cars Yeah podcast. So you and he are Cars Yeah alumni. Uh, of course, uh, big shout out to Mark. He has a a podcast called Cars Yeah. You guys should check it out. I think it's, I want to make sure I get the website right. 
uh, he just posted a link to the Cars Yeah with Sid. Uh, great stuff. We also did a vlog with Sid that you guys should check out. Type in on YouTube, uh, Fireball Tim and Sid Mead, and you'll see uh, a five-minute drive episode that we did. Five-minute drive, the number five. You can watch that. So Sid uh, really inspired me. He he gave me the tools I needed to to see myself as a, a professional creative person. And, and that was integral, is that, you know, I was just talking to Kathy um, about her success as a surfer. And Kathy's a successful surfer and has been for many, many years. Oh, we can't say how many years. I don't think she's listening, but I can't, you know, talk about that stuff. Uh, but she set out the goal. She said, I want to be a surfer. And that was the intention. She didn't have a surfboard. She didn't have a way to get to the beach. She was like 14 years old. Um, but she just constantly put that that thought out there just says, I want this, I want this, I want this. She never gave any negativity to it. It was always positive flow. And as you know, the more positive flow you put out there, the more things it connects with and brings back to you. Well, that Christmas, her mom gave her a surfboard for Christmas. It just kind of happened. Um, and that was step one. I have a surfboard. So she put it in her swimming pool. She couldn't get to the beach. She was only 14, couldn't drive. And then that following year, she found a friend who had a car, eventually made her way to the beach, made herself, uh, she joined a surf club, got into the waves and became a successful surfer, um, even competed uh, for many years. So the, the thing about that is that there was no negativity injected into that thing. So there was no doubts, no fears and anxiety. It was just like that it was a process. This is the next step. This is what we need to do. Same thing with the coloring books. The next step we need to do. Same thing with Mark Green, who's got uh, Cars Yeah. He says, hey, I wanna have this guy on my show. What do I need to do in order to achieve that? Uh, no doubts, no fears. So as a baseline creative, you have to identify what it is that you want, and then you have to move toward it strate towards it strategically. Uh, Erlen Romero, thanks for watching, buddy. Uh, I don't know if Erlen is a, if that's a guy's name, right? I'm sorry, if I, that's the first time I've ever seen that name before. Good for you, man. Unique name. Awesome. I know what that's like. Uh, okay, so that's, that's what I mean by uh, a baseline creative. So uh, you want to look for people that, again, one more time, uh, hi, Donna, uh, for people that are doing what you want to do in the best possible way. You want to emulate them and you want to, that to be your baseline. Good morning, Tracy. Um, and then I want to distinguish the difference between inspired action and regular activity, okay? Inspired action is like you're in the shower, you're scrubbing your, your do, you're doing your thing, and then suddenly an idea pops in went in the shower. My hair's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, you, you get an, an idea. An idea comes to you. We talked about in yesterday's art talk that we don't come up with ideas. Hold on a second. Got to keep the fuel going. We don't come up with ideas. We receive ideas and we vibrate ideas out. So you, in order to do that, you have to open yourself. You have to clear your mind of your anxieties and your fears, or if you have a fear of criticism or a fear of, uh, of being rejected or all these things, those things constantly populate your mind. When you take a hike, when you do things that that uh, force you to think about other things, uh, it's it's as an example, it's kind of like you're in an argument with somebody and then you suddenly hear a car crash. That argument is over, right? It, you drop the whole thing and you go out because people are hurt and suddenly your attention is brought to something else and you can drop it. That the only way that ideas can flow to you is when your your glass is empty so that you, you can fill it. Uh, good morning, Tracy. Thanks for watching. And the way to fill it is to let those things go. You, you, there's never a time where you're not thinking, uh, except when you're sleeping. But when you're awake and you're thinking, uh, you have to be very conscious of what you think about, knowing that those thoughts are gonna vibrate out and they're gonna connect with things and it's gonna come back to you. And that's very important to recognize. Good morning, Joe Magliato. What's up, buddy? Uh, I don't know what you're doing sitting there watching Art Talk. You should be building a freaking cool car. But okay, if you want to hang out with us, that's good too. Awesome. So inspired action versus activity. Regular activity is like trying to get things to work, trying to make things happen. Um, and there's anxiety there. There is uh, there's stress there. Uh, inspired action is asking yourself this morning, what do I really love? What would re really make me happy today? And... You have to follow through with those things and not talk yourself out of it because uh, it only takes about five to 10 seconds to talk yourself out of doing something really cool. But if an idea comes to you, like you're in the shower and uh, an idea to draw something, to take a, a photography class, to to um, 
do something creative, to treat people with kindness versus, uh, you know, maybe you got a boss at work who's a complete asshole and you, you, you dread going to work. Um, what would happen if you showered the guy with compliments? Uh, it takes a lot of strength. It takes a lot of courage to do things like that. But if you do something different, you will get a different response guaranteed. Always. That's the way it works. You can't keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. You guys know this, right? Uh, insanity. And that's that we sometimes live an insane life because we keep doing the same thing over and over again, not realizing that's what we're doing. So the way to switch that stuff up, uh, switch up your day. In the morning, if you have coffee in the morning, have tea. Uh, if you go take a walk at 10 o'clock, take a walk at 7. Um, take a run. Switch things up. You will get a different result. So inspired action is action as an idea that comes to you. It's a gift that's given to you. And, and you don't want to squander that. You don't want to think of that as like, oh, I, I'm not sure I feel like doing that, blah, blah, blah. You have to grab hold of that mother and you got to go downtown. You got to do the thing, right? Okay. As a creative person, we become masters at this. We come, become masters because every single drawing in this book, right? I randomly think this drawing, boss right there. Can you see that? Okay. That was an inspired drawing. That's not a drawing that I, I said, hey, I want to draw a Boss 351 and that's going to be on my list. Um, I made a list of cars that I wanted to do for that book and every book that we're doing, hence. Uh, but that list changes because I wake up in the morning and I suddenly get an, a visual in my mind. I get a message in my mind saying, hey, that would be really cool. Then, of course, I, I say to Kathy, oh, I got a great idea. Well, I know that... I really didn't get a great idea, but I received something. It's whether I'm going to run with it or not. And when I do, I end up doing cool books, and they keep going. This is the Porsche book. Now, there's a sketch in here, and I'm going to show you a little bit of it. That That's all you get to see. Yeah. I'm not going to give that away. Are you crazy? Ricky, good morning. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Ricky's joined us. Elijah's joined us. Uh, Kip says, great advice. Thank you. Uh, you know, we all have to do our part. Um it helps as a creative person to find a medium that allows you to share the knowledge that you have. Because every one of you guys is an expert at something. And, you know, you, you could be a chef like Lawrence Flinton. You can be um, uh, really good at uh, organization. You know, you have to find that thing that you're really good at. And there's a reason that you're good at it because you, you love that thing. And follow that. It doesn't mean, I'm not saying go quit your job. I'm not saying go and, and uh, uh, throw in the towel somewhere else and follow this wholeheartedly, but you got to start taking steps. Um, Kathy wanting to be a surfer, she didn't stop going to school and just suddenly go to the beach and live there. You know, it doesn't make any sense to do that. It makes sense to follow through with that, that gut instinct. You feel it here, but it came here. You received it. We're like a radio station and we're receiving signals all the time based on the, the signals that we're sending out. So if you have any fears or anxieties about things, they begin to populate your life in different things. Like if you have to say you have a fear of criticism, you walk down the street and you talk to a, a postal worker and he gives you a hard time and criticizes you for not having the stamps in the right place or whatever it is. Those things are strategic. Those things, that's how things work. And uh, how you react to those things is of supreme importance because if you react in a negative way, then you keep the ball rolling and you don't want that, right? You want to be able to change that up. So if you react with love and compassion, very tough, very tough. I'm not saying that it's easy to do this. It is the most difficult thing that a human being has to do, but that's why we're here. That's why we're here. That's the whole point of life is for us to go from ignorance to awareness, from I didn't know this is how it worked to like, oh, this is how it works and now I can apply that. Do you guys want to be 70 or 80 years old or 90 years old and still don't get it because there's lots of people out there that don't get it and they still don't apply it. So my goal today for you guys in Art Talk is to make, to help you guys, to motivate you guys to become successful, uh, whether it's financially successful or, or successful as a creative person, creative not being an artist or a, or a painter or a sculptor, but as a creative being, uh, creating your life, let's say that your life is a canvas and making, bringing that to fruition. It, my goal in this art talk and with the vlog somewhat uh, by showing you what it is that we're doing, but in, in art talk here is to motivate you to get your off your ass. I'm not messing with you. Get off your ass and do something today that puts a smile on your face. And if you haven't done that, then there's no one to blame but you. So 
Instead of having to do that and feel bad, all you got to do is get off your butt and do something today that's going to make you feel good. And the best way to do that is to do something for somebody else, okay? Is to go out there, find somebody who needs some help, even if it's a smile, a pat on the back, uh, a moment of kindness, a gift, uh, whatever it is. You, you got to figure out a way to, to, you, to have giving as a permanent part of your life. And this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to give to you guys uh, a bit of something that, you know, it's not like I've mastered this. I haven't mastered this. I'm, you know, I'm going through this myself on a daily basis. This is not something that one day I know I'll, I'll have mastered it and I'm suddenly Mr. Guru and you'll see a floating thing around my head. That's not how it works. You know, the, this is a constant, we're, we're running a marathon, people. We're running a marathon and it's a marathon that, that doesn't end until you're six feet under. So, and I'm not even sure it ends then, uh, but you can make your life better by thinking thoughts of love and putting good things into the world as a creative being, as a creative genius. So your baseline is your awareness that you can do this and you have to work up from there. Okay. So does that make any sense? Does that make you guys making sense? Give me a thumbs up or something to tell me what I'm talking about isn't a bunch of baloney. Because it's not, you know, it's not even ham. It's not even a meat-based product. It's, I'm vegan, so I'm not going to even talk about that. All right, I got some loves. Thank you, guys. Uh, I appreciate uh, very much uh, that you want to hang out with me today. Always, always move forward and always stay positive. Uh, and uh, through that, success and you will merge. Bam, just like that. Ow. Just like that. That's how it works, okay? So have a spectacular day. It's up to you, and we will see you guys maybe tomorrow. I'm, I'm interspersing the vlog in this. I can't do both each day. I planned on doing a vlog for today. I apologize. It's not finished. Right over there. Still working on it. See my, my collection of diecast? It's hard to get anything done when that's sitting there looking at me all the time. Uh, anyway, so tomorrow will probably be a vlog. This weekend, once again, there is no Muscles and Mojo. Wheels and Waves is coming uh, April 17th. Uh, we have an all-new book, which is the Porsche book that's coming out. Uh, next month, sorry, April 1st, somewhere around there. And um, hell, we got a, a, an amazing life. We got an amazing life, right? I mean, there's lots of stuff to be grateful for. So uh, when you're done here, think of, uh, think of five things to be grateful for and, uh, and then have a spectacular day. Okay, love you guys. We'll talk to you soon.